Today's top story from the perspective of someone who's there. You are looking live. This just in. Not my beat. It's been his beat for um, a long time. John Kime, th- really, this is, you know, not my beat. It's your beat, John. Uh, that's the <laughs> name of the segment. Uh, you're the king of the beat, and it's always a pleasure to have you, my friend. Thanks for joining me uh, on this Football Friday. Well, always fun to talk football with you, Craig. You know that. I appreciate that. And we will get to the ball in a moment. But you and your colleague at ESPN, Jamison Hensley, talked on your podcast, The John Kime Report, available wherever you get your podcast, uh, about kind of the importance of this game in the, uh, actually an area where we have a lot of listeners you know, on the Team 980 in Maryland, that space between D.C. and and Baltimore, uh, along the BW Parkway, along 95, all the, all the towns that dot it, that over the years were longtime strongholds of uh, Washington football fandom. And as the Ravens were good and the commanders uh in previous iterations of the organization went south, uh, the, the color of the jerseys seemed to change in, in the classrooms and in, in the grocery stores and everywhere. What was that conversation like with Jamison as, as you've seen that evolution from your side of it and he's obviously watched it uh, covering the Ravens for a long time? Sure. And a lot of it, when they came here and they started to have success, it kind of matched up with when Dan Snyder took over, the organization was going down, wasn't doing enough. And then, you know, they win Super Bowls and this team is can't even get to the playoffs or there's a there's false hope after false hope after false hope. And then they get Lamar Jackson. So one thing Jamison has talked about, too, is they started to bleed in the fan base anyways. But when you have an electric player like Jackson, it just it expands your fan base, not just in the area, but nationally, because they never had that. That's where it was different. Like, as he said, before it was built on defense. Well, it's kind of hard to sell nationally about like, hey, come watch another 16 to 10 game, right? Whereas right. now you have one of the most exciting players in the league playing for you, and it's been that way for how many years. So it's solidified to me, you know, without doing a lot of research into it, but it has to solidify a hold and, and bleed even deeper into what had been territory for Washington, whatever you want to call them, right? Commanders, you know, football team, rescue, whatever it is they bled into their territory. And so to, like when you're looking at this, not just this game, because the game isn't going to decide who's a fan and who isn't. It's going to be the rise of Jaden Daniels. And so the more he solidifies himself as a player, and there's no reason to think he's going to go anywhere but up, the more you're going to see like maybe more fighting for some of those, the fan attention in those areas, the fan tickets, suites, ad rev, whatever it is, jerseys, you know, so I think there's more of a chance for this team to compete because if they're better, but also now you have a highly marketable player as well. Right. Finally, you got the kids where they look at their friends in their Lamar Jackson jerseys and they're in their sad burgundy and gold. It's like, no, no, my, mine's not sad anymore. I Mine's a five jersey with Daniels on the back and my guy's awesome too. And like, for the lost generation or almost at this point, two right. generations of commanders fans like that is from the business side is a huge deal. And I think is so many people want to downplay the rivalry because it's like, Oh, there's not a lot of history that this, but like that is very much a real element of the game this week and kind of the, the, the parallel storylines that we hope continue to be upwards for both franchises. Well, I think it's probably as much a marketing rivalry as it is anything because you yeah. are, or just the competition for business dollars. Right. And the stadium's, aren't that far apart where you get that middle ground area where you're fighting, you know, not literally, but you're fighting for those fans and this, somebody like Daniels helps you get them. And it's, he's the, it's a lot easier, you know, God bless Taylor Heineke and all that. Heineke wasn't going to believe in that (laughs) unless you won. Right. Right. Um, But even then you knew that with Taylor was always, there's a ceiling, there's an absolute ceiling and he's probably was about at it. Whereas for Daniels, I mean, he's played five games and he's already doing this well. Where can he get to? And he's the kind of guy that you need to take to re-energize a fan base. And so I think like that's where for the season for selling tickets and all that, that's the key. Is it if they were three and two, but they're winning, you know, a little bit differently and they didn't have Jaden Daniels, let's say they have a JJ McCarthy, but they're not quite as fun to watch offensively, whatever it is, like you're not going to see the excitement the same to the same level. I just think it's it's the winning plus then you have this yeah. unbelievable dual threat rookie that can take you even further. 
It's a great point. John Kime with us, of course, ESPN.com, the John Kime Report podcast as well, if you want to check that out. So let's talk, let's go from like highfalutin narrative talk to very nitty gritty football talk. Um, your colleague at ESPN, Mina Kimes, was a, one of the people that I know highlighted this on her show and her preview, like the 12 personnel, Baltimore Ravens get up there. They got two tight ends on the field. They run the mess out of the football. Washington likes to match 12 personnel with their nickel, so a lighter personnel grouping, and they've, they've gotten away with it to an extent so far this year. What options exist for Joe Witt Jr. to ultimately defend what is the key matchup, how Washington defends the run, but specifically knowing how Baltimore wants to run the football? Well, I think you also have to look at, you know, you have some bigger safeties, and you have to, that's, you know, the Jeremy Chins of the world, right? And so that's, that's a factor. I, but when I, like when I was watching them last week against Cincinnati, for example, there are times where they did a good job creating a very light box for Derrick Henry. And then, so what's the key there? It's the D linemen have to get off their blocks. Linebacker said, you have to, you have to play your box. As, as, as Daryl Tapp said, we asked him that today, or, um, and he's like, play your technique, trust the technique, get off the block. Right. So you have to do those kind of things. Like, just because it's a light box doesn't mean you have to give up yards. And so I think that's part of it as well, because like, yeah, they'll use the fullback a ton. And, but you have to, like when I'm watching, when, when you see some guys getting stopped, it's because guys are filling aggressively and getting to the right hole. Like I saw a play where, to be honest, Craig, I saw one play where Derek Henry ran it. And I'm like, did the safety really want to get over there? Cause it didn't look like it. And you can't have those play. Like one thing I trust. In fairness to that guy, I wouldn't want to tackle Derrick Henry oh, either. Although that's not no. my job. I, not I get to talk to, to you. I don't have right. to talk. I don't have to go tackle Derrick Henry. I don't either. And and you know, but if it's your job, you got to get over there, right? And you probably want to do. It. And it's really hard. So I I do think some of it. You know, I think you also have to be cognizant. The the, the thing with Henry too, the Bengals did a pretty good job against him. But then he snaps off a 51 yarder, you know, and, and that's the play I'm talking about too. But he snaps off a 51 yarder and like that, but all this good play before that went not for naught, but like that's what he just ruined it in one play. And so they did a good job to that point. And I think, I think it's the same thing. Like, what do you want to take away? You still don't want explosive down the field. So you don't want, I don't know that you're going to really want to, I don't know how much are you going to change your personnel because. You have Zay Flowers who can hurt you down the field, right? And you you want to make sure you have speed on the field to also combat Lamar when he runs. I mean, yeah, you go back to that. Remember the Chargers years ago where they used, I think it was a dime personnel all game. Well, you can't do that now because of Derrick Henry. But the point of it was to use get a lot of speed on the field to contend when Lamar gets outside the pocket. I also, I think in that area too, that's where Frankie Louvu and guys like that can help. Like he has such great closing yeah. speed that what is that what does that look like also on the blitzes too? So I think that's where, you know, personally I'm gonna try and pressure him up the middle because I think that's where you can get him into some trouble. And um, you know, so I think but I think when the with the Henry stuff, it's you've got to be able to get off your if you've got a one on one, you've got to get off your blocks. Yeah, and finishing is just so basic, important. I know that's yeah, basic, but I know that's basic. But no, it, I mean, it it does answer the question, right? Is like, we're going to rely on our defensive linemen to do what we ask them to do. We're not going to put nine in the box and be like, hey, if Lamar beats us as a thrower, like there are different ways you can go about that. And this team, the way, if, if we go all the way back to the beginning, if you will, the way this team is built from a roster construction standpoint, they are putting a lot on their defensive linemen. Those are their highest paid guys. And ultimately, like there's some things you can do. I, I was talking with Logan on the phone about this earlier, um, like jam fronts and and you get you get like super technical real quick, which you probably don't need to do here on the radio. But the, there's some ways in which you can jam it up for, no pun intended, jam it up for Baltimore and then rely on the fact that you do have a guy in Jeremy Chin who's kind of a, that high type Correct. of player. And I also wonder, Craig, too, like we've seen the three defensive tackle alignment with the Johnny Newton, Payne, and Allen. Can you do you do a little bit more of that? And are there times where maybe mm -hmm. you can go to more of a base look because you have Michael Walker as play, he'll play in in um in the red zone area. Do you do that at other parts of the field too? Just you cannot do that consistently because the minute they see that, the the thing that they do too is there's Watching that offense, like they'll they will 
do some of what Washington does as far as like how they try to fool you in the run game with the jet action, with, you know, you, you'll see some of the say, okay, you got a split backfield. You got two backs in the backfield and you're going to fake to Derrick Henry going one way. You got a jet going another and you got the quarterback going to the right. You know what I mean? Like, so they try to do some of that as well. So that's why you can't just go with a, with a bigger lineup all the time. But I do, I do wonder, would they go to some more of the Newton, Payne Allen, but that's also probably a little bit more of a pass thing too with Newton, right? And so, you know, is right. but is that something? Is that something you would can, because here's the other thing: like you do that, like I'll take Farrell in there trying to set an edge, and and you know I think um, Armstrong's a nice job, so I don't want to take those guys out very often. But I think where Newton helps you too, though, is if you push, if you can push the pocket a little bit, he can create some havoc, I believe, because you know he's just. I I like what he offers. It's just that he's got to get more experience. Right. And you do wonder about rush lane discipline for a rookie and and Lamar Jackson. So there's, there's, there are no perfect plans. That's why Lamar Jackson is Lamar Jackson. He just, he just, it's hard enough. Derrick Henry, when you had Ryan Tannehill, all due respect, uh, playing quarterback in Tennessee, but now, now with Lamar, it it does seem like a cheat code. Um, a couple other guys, oh, and you just mentioned one that, that we need to, uh, understand what they're, where they're at this week. I think in order to have this discussion too, injury wise, what do we know about Cleveland Furl? And then what do we know about Jordan McGee? Because he's a guy that looked really good in the pre season he would be a rookie be one heck of a welcome to the nfl if they decided to activate him and use him this week but he's pretty fast you know he's known for being able to be instinctual and make tackles so if they go base like they could if they go him over walker but just from an availability standpoint where are we on furl and where are we on well, uh mcgee well, coming off cleveland I, cleveland I think it's he did go he was limited you know i was watching him the other day he um looked pretty good doing the individual drills, but that's just individual, right? Just warm up stuff. But it, I think they felt pretty good about him. Um, nothing official, but I, I, but as Dan Quinn told us today, both he and Noah Brown, for example, both had good weeks. That's a good sign because he's missed three games and with that knee injury. And so he's a big plus to get back in as a, He's not obviously. I know he's got a couple of sacks, but that's not his thing. Is but playing the run is really is where you need him. And with McGee, I don't know who they would bring up because they got this. They have the spot. They also have FA Obata, and so mm. I don't know which one they would bring up. But I think with McGee, I would still look at him more as a. I would I would want to have him work more in practice before I'm putting him in there in a in a from scrimmage, but not on special teams. I put him on special teams in a heartbeat. I just think that's a lot of time to miss and then put him in there in a game right now at, when you're a rookie. Um, but, you know, but yes, I they do like him. He does have the speed. I think Walker, is when he's been in there in the red zone stuff, he's done a nice job. And yeah. so I don't think, I don't know that they'd have a problem putting him in there, but you're right. Like the speed is the, is the, is a intriguing aspect of it, but I would still look at Walker maybe as the guy that would be ahead in that area if they went to that sort of look. And you're only going to go to that look if you get the right look on offense, as you know. Right, right. Yeah, the personnel matching is an enormous part of this game. And it's also a huge part when we flip the field. John Kimes with us, of course, ESPN and ESPN.com. You can read his work there. Um, When commanders have been at their best this year they're able to do a whole bunch of stuff uh offensively very seamlessly getting in and out of different formations with the same personnel grouping getting defenses caught on the field and you see how i mean like at the beginning of the game last week uh jok uh jeremiah wusu koromoa like he is flying all over the field by not even halftime that dude was gassed trying to chase Jaden daniels around how do you think that they attack this Baltimore defense that has been incredibly stout against the run, but has struggled tremendously giving up big plays in the passing game? They have. Now, the funny thing is, like, watching even the Bengals game last week, there were a handful of throws. I'm like, that's actually not bad coverage. It's just a really good throw by Joe Burrow. And, like, you're looking at, like, is he really th- – because, like, you know, you go through the all 22 and you're looking at the details of the play and, like, and you're watching, okay, he's short, you know, 15 yard out to the left to this guy. And I'm watching, like, he's really not that open, but it's NFL open and he's getting rid of the ball at a time. So if you're getting it out on time, you can complete those. He also had some deep ones that I felt were the result of some good concepts, right? So you can, but you can hurt them there for, of, of the two ways. That's where you can hurt them, right? So 
Um, I also think in the run game, I think what was what looks to be really hard is just you, you're just not going to line up and just try and slam it on them. So you're going to have to be a little bit of creative, which I think they've been. And the, the wrinkle here is defending Jaden Daniels as well. And, um, and I also like if you don't depends on do you have Brian Robinson? I don't we don't know yet. If not, you know, you like those two running back looks. You got Eckler. Can you spread and try and run that way? Um, you know, can you get the ball? Like they've been good in other games. Okay, it's, it was hard to run against the Giants or whatever. So you're going you're gonna to throw a lot of the smoke routes, the screens, the receivers, which, as you know, serve as extended handoffs, right? So right. do you try and get it? Do you try and do things that way as well? Um, but I, you know, and that's a, it's a, it is a very good front. And Roquan Smith is really good. Kyle Hamilton plays a lot in the box. They're hard. Even in the pass, you know, pass blocking, Craig, that's going to be a hard thing. Like, they do a lot of different stuff. Like, I don't know why they're struggling as much as they are against the pass. Um, you know, I've watched some of it, but not enough to, you know, just – so I think you still have to be sound in the pass game. Like it's not like it's just like it was last year here where guys are just running open all over the place because guys are colliding or not talking or whatever. Right. It, so you know, but I there th- is some of that. I think that's the thing that's interesting. Like the numbers, the down to down performance is better than the overall numbers because right, right. they have had a couple of coverage they, busts. They've yeah, they've busted years. at least two for touchdowns this year. Mm-hmm. Um, Worthy had one in the opener, and I'm I'm forgetting the other one. Uh, but then like Jamar Chase slips a tackle last week and runs away from everybody, and all of a sudden you're the third worst team in the league in yards after catch because you miss a tackle and the tackle is on Jamar Chase and 70 yards a yak later that really hurts your stats. And so I think that's been the interesting thing is like the put them in conflict and make them unsure and they will miss a tackle. Right. They will oh, have a bust. Sure. And so how do they, how do the, the question is with for Cliff this week and his staff is like, how do you do that? I'm sure that's and, what they've spent their entire week on. Great. Right. And there was the Bengals had a touchdown last week where they put the safety in stress and he ended up getting a, I think it was a deep post off of that. I think it was T Higgins, I believe if I remember right, but they did that because, you know, just the coverage look, you put the safety in stress, you have this look and he's coming, you know, the other Tight end coming down another area. I can't. I don't remember the play exactly. I just remember the safety being in stress because you got two guys you have to worry about, and you, you, the tight end takes the focus and he's got the got the post. I don't know if you remember that play or not, but yeah. But the point is they put him in stress, and so you can do that. And then also his ability to extend plays, like you, it's hard to prepare for that. And I know they can they face Lamar Jackson. Well, these guys face Jaden, so I I get that but it's still hard to defend them because it's just different. And I think that's where you have to be very good. And for Daniels is to continue to look upfield because every week there's been a chance to make a big play with his arm. He got it to McLaurin last week and he's, you know, he had a couple last week, but there are a couple that you still could have gotten that he knows they know, and it's part of the growth process, but it's where like, if those are available, you can't miss those in this game. And that's that's what you you know so you're going to have to be good in that way but i think with the run i think it's going to be sometimes a lot of you know i guess fooling the eyes a lot of eye candy right and you know you're going to get like i liked last week on on the fourth down play the jet action to austin eckler like not many teams use a running back on a jet action and to hand it off to them and so and if they know, hadn't and he didn't that guy didn't have austin eckler's instincts that is not a first down no that for sure is crazy. for sure for sure. And, you know, you you have like Zacchaeus, you can use their creative ways to use him as we've seen in the past. And so I think there's just different ways you're going to have to try and get to it. And then obviously incorporate Jaden, but it's not like he's – and the thing, like he doesn't even have to get 10 yards when he runs it. If you get four or five, just let him know that he's keeping it, which they already know. So, you know, I think – the but, I, but yes, the pass game, there will be opportunities. Uh, Marlon Humphrey is very good. They will play zone, so you can just be patient – and, you know, if they're playing too high, you know, you're going to try to run the ball a little bit more. And so they will, you know, they seem to play more, a lot of zone, right? And so I think that will open up some things, but it's it's about patience. And um, I think they've been able to be very patient. They've shown that. Last week was an anomaly with as many big plays as they had. They've been more patient than that, you know, than, than, than allowing them to go on those long drives. 
Yeah, for sure. It, it, they just have been able to find ways to win, which feels odd because, you know, I've been covering this team for almost 10 years now. You've been covering it for 30 now. And if the team, teams finding ways to win in Washington has not been a specialty uh, on the gridiron or, frankly, in any other arena no. uh, for most of that no. time. But this team has, has certainly figured that out, and it is a heck of a lot of fun to watch. Uh, John will have his Five Things That He Thinks uh, yeah. podcast out this weekend, which is always a great listen. It's always my go-to listen on the way to the game. Probably listen to it on my, uh, my Sunday morning run this week because i'm not actually well, going to baltimore see i listen to you and logan on the way to the game so <laughs> so there you go it's just you know we should return and serve i, I was t- t- talking to my wife earlier joking with her i was like john and i don't get to talk as much as uh we used to when i was on the beat every day but i feel like we talk to each other through our podcast oh, so at least sure. we're still in communication for sure for sure, for sure. um so check out that this weekend. And of course, John's work at ESPN.com. John, always great to have you on the radio, sir. Much appreciated. And uh, I'll see you in a couple of weeks back at, uh, at Northwest Stadium. And uh, I'll talk to you through my podcast until then. There you go. Thanks, Craig. Always enjoy it. This is the Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.